Hey everybody, I'm Alicia Purdy, publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm reading the Bible through in a year. Today is day 323 of our Bible in a year reading plan. I'm so glad that you're with me today. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up button underneath this video, logging it into your YouTube library. By now, you probably know the drill. Make sure that you have a completion to each day's reading. Check the, Get the whole Bible start to finish each day, 365 days of your life. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really in the scope of eternity. And the benefits are just incalculable in the word of God because it's alive. It's active. It's powerful. It's sharp. It goes forth it, from his mouth. It doesn't return void. These are powerful scriptures. Jeremiah 1, 12. He watches over his word to see it performed. Reading the Bible through in a year is a great challenge. And it is a challenge. Ask me how I know, but a worthy one. So just make sure you fulfill it to a completion. Of course, the enemy is going to throw everything at you. Hit the thumbs up button, making sure that at the end of 365 days, you didn't miss any days. And it lets you and I partner together in the gospel, putting the gospel online and co-laboring together in, in these simple and easy ways with such power and profound meaning. When people come and search, they will find. God said that as a promise that, yes, he was including YouTube when they seek him with all their heart. He can use any resource to bring the word to life for somebody. So anyway. Thank you for partnering with me in this ministry by subscribing and leaving a comment if something blessed you, a testimony for another believer or an unbeliever to come by and read someday. God will bring the increase. Check out the resources also linked below for continued study. You know, I always say knowledge is great. Everybody has knowledge of the Bible. Somebody somewhere has something to say about the Bible. We want to understand it and learn how to apply it. This is how our faith grows and stays sharp and strong in the day of adversity because it's coming. We have an enemy. He's got his arrows. We've got the sword and lots of other things God has given us to fight spiritual battles because our battle is not against flesh and blood. It just isn't. It might look like it. That's what the enemy wants us to think, but it's against principalities and powers. That's why we need a spiritual sword. The word of God, it's going to stay sharp. All right. So check those resources out below from the way of the worshiper.com where I have the journalism style devotional blog articles, deeper dives into all kinds of things that I, as a believer, am also studying on my way of the worshiper. As I walk my own journey of faith, you walk yours. God will bring the increase as we continue to study his word and get strong in our faith. There's a reflection sheet linked below as well. You can grab it, print it out learn to apply and look at God's word in light of the journey that you're on. God has something he wants to say to you today and to me. Yes. And amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you. Heavenly father for this day. We lift our hands in praise and worship to you. Holy father. You are a good God, a great King above all gods. Holy spirit. We invite you here in this place where two or three are gathered in your name. We invite you here, Lord, to speak and to move and to reveal through your word. You have the words to life. We believe you and trust in you and put our faith in you. And we declare that we will not be the same after today because we have received your words into our hearts, been washed by the water of your word. And we thank you, Father, that you have made a way under your everlasting mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we're reading in the book of Ezekiel today. Ezekiel is the watchman. The Lord had commissioned him. And said, I put a, it's very convicting actually, even today for believers, we are watchmen and it's reiterated in the new Testament. But he said, if you are given a message that I sent to warn people that I love, including wicked people, he said, if you do not speak that message, if you do not warn them, I will require that of you, that responsibility. We are the shepherds. Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep, tend to my sheep. That's what we see all these eras of time before in the book of Ezekiel. The Lord has said yesterday, I'm going to take away your reproach. I'm going to shepherd you myself. That was such a beautiful thing. And he said, through, I'm going to send one day my own shepherd. That was Jesus Christ. I'm going to put a spirit within you that was prophetic of Jesus Christ as well. And the Holy Spirit, the work of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel, he didn't know he was, he was seeing through a glass darkly, like Paul said. And here we are indwelled by the Holy Spirit following the good shepherd because God keeps all of his promises. We just have to really work hard not to judge the timeline. He makes all things beautiful in his time. So Solomon said, all right. So today we're reading Ezekiel 37 and 38, encountering the very famous prophecy of the Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full 
of bones. And he caused me to pass among them all around. And there were very many in the open valley and they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, "Uh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you so that you live. And I will lay sinews upon you and grow back flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you so that you live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise and a shaking and the bones came together, bone to its bone. When I looked, the sinews and the flesh grew upon them and the the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy, O son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain so that they live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these are the bones, the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy to them. Thus says the Lord God, pay attention, O my people. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall be a place in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Moreover, son of man, take one stick and write on it for Judah and for the sons of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it, For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, and his companions. Then join them to one another in one stick, so they become one in your hand. When the sons of Israel, your people, speak to you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these things? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel and his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. The sticks on which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I will take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king over them and they shall be two nations no more, nor shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more. Nor shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. David, my servant, shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. They shall dwell in the land I have given to Jacob, my servant, in which your fathers have lived. And they shall dwell in it, they and their sons and their sons' sons forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God and they shall be my people. The nations shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Time to grab that highlighter. This is my Jesus appeared in the Old Testament highlighter. What is he talking about? My servant David shall be king. David's dead. He's talking about Jesus of the house of David. He shall be king. That's Jesus. They shall all have one shepherd. That's Jesus. They will dwell in the land. He says, my servant David will be there prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. Isaiah said he would be called wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. How beautiful we see these appearances, these prophetic movements of Jesus Christ concealed in the old covenant, revealed in the new. What a faithful God 
Like I said before, we all struggle with God's timeline. We all wonder, you said, God, you said, hey, I do the same thing. We, you said, God, if you did say, and he has said so many times throughout the book of Ezekiel, I spoke it, I will perform it. Jeremiah 1, 12, he hastens his word. He watches over his word to see it performed. You can trust the Lord. I'm speaking to myself today. You can trust the Lord. I can trust the Lord. Okay, here we are in Ezekiel chapter 38. The word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him saying, thus says the Lord God, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you back and put hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your armies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet. I will do so to Gomer and all its troops, Beth Togarma of the North Quarters and all its troops, and many peoples with you be prepared and prepare yourself, you and all your companies that are assembled to you, be a guard to them. After many days, you shall be called in the latter years, you shall come into the land that is restored from the sword, whose inhabitants have been gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which had always been a waste. But its people were brought out of the nations and they, all of them are dwelling safely. You shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be a cloud to cover the land, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, it shall come to pass on that day that things shall come into your mind and you shall think an evil thought and you shall say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go up against those who are at rest that dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take spoil and to seize prey, to turn your hand against the desolate places that are now inhabited and against the people who are gathered out of the nations who have obtained livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the world. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all its villages shall say to you, have you come to take spoil? Have you gathered your company to seize prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and good, to take away spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord God, on that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shall you not know it? And you shall come from your place out of the north parts, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. And you shall come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall come about in the latter days that I will bring you against my land. So the nations may know me when I will shall be sanctified in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Speaking of a nation that's going to come from the north and attack. This is God sending word on ahead. These nations were already going to come. God knows all things throughout all of eternity, all at the same time. How faithful he is to send on word ahead. But he also makes sure that these nations, which were already going to come anyway, sometimes he uses them as the rod of affliction. We've seen a chastising rod, not to break and leave broken, but to remake when we're talking about his people that he loves. But the judgment on these pagan nations, they were already wherever they were in the north existing in the most evil way. So then they won't escape because God sees and knows. Thus says the Lord God. Are you he of whom I have spoken in the former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my anger. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea and the fowl of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep on the earth and all the men who are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. 
I will call for a sword against him and all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. I will enter into judgment with him with pestilence and blood. I will rain upon him and upon his troops and upon the many peoples who are with him in overflowing rain and hailstones and fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. That's the end of our reading in the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament for today. The whole point, the theme of it all, that they shall know that I am the Lord. All of this stuff that we see, we are seeing from hindsight. Back then, it was the future. God is sending word on ahead. He said, I rise up early. I tell you these things. This is what it looks like under the law of sin and death. If people insist on being enemies of God, they all knew. They all knew that Jerusalem was the city of God, the glory of the whole earth. Everybody knew it was world renowned. That's why they always want to attack it, because that's what the world is like. They want to attack and shed blood and carry off the gold and the silver and all the best resources and enslave all the people. That's what it really looks like out there. Thank God for his everlasting mercy and that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. All right, let's go over and read in the New Testament. Reading today, James chapter 1 through 2, 17, uh, chapter 1, verse 19 through 2, 17. James is the half-brother of Jesus. He has a very proverbial sense to the way that he writes. He writes a lot of, it's considered the book of the Proverbs, quote unquote, in the New Testament. So much godly wisdom that James has. And um, when we were reading yesterday, we're talking about asking for wisdom in faith. A double-minded man, when, you, when you're struggling with your faith and you don't really believe what you're asking for, he says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and we don't receive from the Lord if we don't approach him in faith. That's what the book of Hebrews was about that we just finished reading. Every good gift comes from the Lord. Let no man say when he's tempted of, that he's tempted of God. God would not tempt you with evil. People like to think that. It isn't true. It does not add up in scripture. And it's important that we have scriptural agreement in the way that we think and speak. No man. In fact, the Bible does say when temptation comes, God always makes a way of escape. That's the good God that we know. So picking it up here, James 1 19. Therefore, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and remaining wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man viewing his natural face in the mirror. He views himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man will be blessed in his deeds. If anyone among you seems to be religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep one's self un stained by the world. James chapter two. My brothers have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory without partiality. For if a man with a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and also a poor man in ragged clothing comes in, and you have respect for him who wears the fine clothing and say to him, sit here in a good place to the poor, stand there, or sit here under my footstool. Have you not then become partial among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him, but you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and drag you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by which you were called? If you fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as sinners. For whoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, is guilty of breaking the whole law. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if you do not commit adultery, yet you kill, you have become a lawbreaker. So speak and do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For he who has shown no mercy will have judgment without mercy. For mercy triumphs over 
judgment. What does it profit, my brothers, if a man says he has faith, but no works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and lacking daily food, and one of you says to him, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, yet you give them nothing that the body needs, what does it profit? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. We're going to leave it right there in the book of James. What a powerful reading that is, looking at faith in action, not being hearers of the word. Lots of people are hearers of the word, but they're not doers of the word. That's the knowledge, understanding, and application I'm always talking about. Okay, let's go over into the book of Psalms. Reading today, Psalm chapter 117, the shortest little tiny chapter in the Bible. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Exalt him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's our, that's our word for today. Praise the Lord. Just in those little few words, all the reasons we need. All right, let's finish up with our proverb. Reading today, Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no one man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That's it. Day 323 is done. So much to think about today. Hit the thumbs up button underneath this video, making sure you watch the whole video. You hit the thumbs up, log it into your library. You can go check at the end of the year that you got them all. Check out the resources linked below. I'm Alicia Purdy, publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord for the words of life that you send to us through your holy scriptures. Thank you, Father, for the Savior and Messiah that you rose up early and told us about, and we couldn't perceive it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you said you would fill us with your spirit, and you did. You would send us a shepherd, and you did. Praise the Lord. We love you, Lord. There's no one like you extending mercy to generations. We so worship you with our whole hearts today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.